Um, you know, we like do like. Hi everyone, I'm Trevor from Math Maniac. I'm currently a fourth year math student at Cambridge, and would like to share with you all of the interview questions I have gone through. Um, but I'm not alone here. I'm with Tom. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Tom Crawford. So I'm actually one of the uh, maths tutors at uh, Oxford. So, but I did go to Cambridge. So I do like both. Um, so I teach at St Edmund Hall, and we're actually here um, in the St Edmund Hall Library. So we're recording this video. Um, I also have my own. YouTube channel, uh, which is Tom Rocks Maths, which is why I have agreed to do this uh, <laughs> with Trevor. Yeah, so before we move on, I just want to say that there is a huge difference between just solving the interview questions in the comfort of your own room versus being put on a spot, which is what I'm doing to Tom right now. Yes, I am a little bit terrified. So, <laughs> so are you ready? I mean, I was, I'm as ready as I'll ever be to, to be re-interviewed <laughs> about 15 years after my original one. Right, right. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm willing to give it a go. Let's see. Yep. Okay, so there will be three interview questions. So we're going to start one off with the graph sketching one, which is actually okay. a pretty pretty common question. Mm -hmm. So can you sketch for me the equation y times y minus 1 equals x times x minus 1? So, okay. Okay, sure. <laughs> right. Okay, so literally just sketch that graph. Yep. Yep, that's okay. it. Um, okay, let's think about this. So that's going to be... So... Uh, I'm gonna think about this myself. So I'm gonna make notes. So I think um, obviously y being zero would mean the left hand side would then be zero. So then I'd have to have that x is zero or one. Yes. And likewise, if y was one, then x would have to also be zero or one. And then the other way around. Yep. So if x was zero or one, y would also have to be zero or one. Yep. Okay. So I think that's telling me that I've got points of interest that could be 0, 0, 1, 0, um, 0, 1, and 1, 1. Um, yep. I think all of those points, this equation would be true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I'm also going to expand them. I don't know if this is going to help, but maybe... Uh, I mean, I'm getting a feeling ahead. of something circle based, but maybe not. Um, so, so if I do expand that, I'm going to get y squared minus y equals x squared minus x. Now, is that going to be helpful? Mm, maybe yeah. it's not circle based. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no! Unless I complete the square. So what if I did that? So what if I completed the square? Would that help? Let's think about that. So, y squared minus y. Um, so I think I can say that's y minus a half y. No, not a half y. Y minus <laughs> a yep. half. So I think if I did that squared. So that's going to give me y squared minus y plus a quarter. So I need to subtract the quarter. Yes. And that's going to be the same as x minus a half minus a quarter yeah so that what this isn't gonna help oh so i mean it's it kind of it kind of <laughs> is helping so mm, okay all right well well you can so minus a quarter obviously goes away <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah um but does it help to know that y minus a half squared has to equal x oh maybe minus a half squared yeah so if y was a half then x was a half Right, so that's another point that would be true for this equation. Mm. Now, when would I expect this to be true? So if you have like a squared equal, equals b squared, what can you say about a and b? Yeah, so if you had a squared yeah, was equal to b squared, then... If you square root both sides, you're going to say that a is plus or minus b. Yeah. Um, and similarly, b is plus or minus a, which is obviously the same thing. Um, 
So can I simply do that? So can I simply say y minus a half would be a is equal to plus or minus x minus a half. Ah, okay, now I think I know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I know what's happening. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so now it's starting to look like a straight line graph. Y equals yeah. mx plus c type situation. Yes. Yes. Okay, so if I put that on a new page, right, so let's try and remember this. So we've got y minus a half. It's going to be equal to plus or minus x minus a half. So let's take the plus root first. So y minus a half equals x minus a half. So that gives me y equals x. Okay, and then that yeah. would fit with the zero, zero, the one, one, what the half, 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 half yeah. right points that I had. Okay, I'm going to keep notes of these just in case. Okay, so that seems sensible. Yeah. I end up with that. And then if I did the negative root, then I'm going to have y minus a half is equal to minus x plus a half. So then that's going to give me that y is equal to minus x plus 1. And that would fit with, so I had a 0. If x was 0, y was 1. If y yeah. was 1, oh, x was right. 0. And, I think and then also a half-half. Half. And also a half-half. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah you basically solved it. You just need to sketch the graph now. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I just wanted to double check that the answers I was getting fit with those initial points. Right, right. Because right, I was yeah, thinking yeah, that was yeah. sort of, to me, felt like a sensible, you know, sort of way to confirm to myself that what I was yeah, doing yeah. later. <laughs> okay, so if I was to now sketch this, um, it's these two graphs. So it's going to be the y equals x graph, which is that one. Um, and it's going to be the y equals minus x, but then added to 1. So that's going to go through here. Yep. And they're going to intersect at that point a half half. So a half half is indeed a key point in this. And then all the other points I mentioned are like these two and this one and one one, etc. etc. So I think it's those two yeah, lines. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so what what you can do here is that not not to complete the square, but actually just move things around. So what you get is like x squared minus y squared mm -hmm. equals x minus y. And then and then of two yeah, squares, yeah, difference of two squares. squares. That yeah, yeah, that okay. would give you like product of things to be equal to zero. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but ah, I, so then of course you get y equals yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah that's, that's nice that's nice yep. Uh, but actually during the interview, the, um, I spent quite a lot of time more than Tom, <laughs> as as you should to be fair. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, so I think you you did very well here. Um, I I think when when I was doing the interview, the interviewer was just, uh, kind of disappointed that I'm doing this kind of thing for some reason if it, it what spotting like, points so yeah but um I, mm. I feel like I feel like that's the sensible thing to do at the first stage so yeah yeah I mean to me as soon as you wrote the equation down I was just immediately seeing how could I make one side yeah. zero which forces the other I don't know just the way it's written out is hinting at least to get some points that you know belong you know you know satisfy the equation and therefore you know have to be on the graph yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that yeah. that's a good strategy. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's the first question. There are two more. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm just checking this is recording. So now here is the second question. Mm -hmm. So there are two parts to this. So okay. the first part you might have heard of. Um, can you find an interval of um, a thousand consecutive integers where none of them are prime? Oh god, this sounds awful. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I think it's 999. It's, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so it's, let me just write it down. So you want an interval... An interval of... Consecutive integers. Okay. Where none are prime. Yep. <sighs> hmm, okay. How am I going to do this? Where none are prime. I've never heard of this before, by the way. Okay, so. okay, okay. And you want it to be at least 999 in size. Well, I mean, I know the prime numbers spread out more. Yes. As we count up. So could yeah. I just write down an astronomically large number? 
I mean, um, it's supposed to be like um, you have to construct an example. Well, actually, I could. I, I could write down an example, right? If I was like, I don't know, 18 Googles and 18 Googles plus 199 is probably fine. I mean, um, <laughs> actually for this part, like the second part is more important. So okay. we can, um, I can give no, no. you the ex like, um, um, I can give you a little bit more of a hint to just Okay, and into consecutive integers when none of them are prime. So how would I go about this? That's an interesting question. How would I even think about this? Um, ooh. So think about like none of them are prime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just yeah, just numbers. think about what are very very composite numbers. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. when none of them are prime. Okay, so... So obviously it's... I know at least half of them won't be because they'll be even. Um, okay, so we've got all the even numbers. Well, obviously we're multiplying by two. And then we've got the ones made up of threes. So anything like three, six, nine, etc. Obviously we've got obvious fives. Anything ending in a five and a zero won't be prime. Hmm. Why specifically would there not be prime numbers in a specific interval? Mm. Like I'm afraid that well, what I like my hint would be like pretty big, so I, I don't Yeah, know. no, it's <laughs> I I'm happy that one exists, but I'll be honest, knowing how I would construct one beyond I'm not thinking of any obvious nothing is immediately coming to me of how I would construct such an interval okay okay never mind um because like the the second part is more important I can give you like a big hint in the first part and then okay the second part is so the big hint is think about factorials right okay Okay. So think about like consecutive integers around factorials. Okay, so consecutive integers around factorials. So obviously factorials, as you said, very composite yeah. because they're made up, right? So n factorial would obviously be n times n minus one blah, 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 times two times one. Yep. Um, but and then I know that n... Oh. Right, so if we've got n factorial as this number for some large n, and then if we were to consider, you know, if we then looked at n plus 1 factorial, it would obviously be n plus 1, n minus 1, da, 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 right down to 2, down to 1. Now, why would anything between them necessarily not contain prime numbers? Just just think about n factorial rather than n plus one factorial. It's just around a factorial. You don't need to around care about the factorial. next factorial. Next factorial should be like really, really far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So around a specific factorial. I mean, I could just arbitrarily pick one. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just pick any, like, big factorial. That that will work. Um, like, it, like, literally any big enough okay, so factorial. Alright, so as in if I had n is 100. That is not big enough. That's not big enough. Okay. 1,000? <laughs> yeah, 10, that, that, okay. that, yeah that, that's big enough now. Okay, so if n is 1,000, then... Why? Okay, let's think about this. So if n is a thousand, okay, so one thousand factorial. Yeah. Ah, okay, I see what's. Ah. I get it now. I get it now. <laughs> right. So a thousand factorial has one, two, three, all the way up to a thousand. Okay, this is clever. I get it now. <laughs> has those as factors. 
Okay, so they are factors. So the only way it could... Hmm, ooh, does that mean that's necessarily true? Because I'm guessing it's going to be this plus 199 is going to be your interval. Yep. Now, can I convince myself why that is going to be true? You don't mm. even need to have the one because I deliberately set number 999. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think I can see, I can sort of see the argument forming in my head, but it's not fully clear yet. So it's like, okay, let me write this out on the next page. So, okay, so a thousand factorial. Right, which is obviously a thousand times nine hundred and ninety nine times nine hundred and ninety eight dot 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 two dot one. So they're all factors of that number. Now if I were to look at a thousand factorial plus nine hundred and ninety nine. Yep. Then I can factor out nine nine nine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then I've obviously got a thousand times nine hundred and ninety eight factorial. Um, plus one. Yes, yeah, yeah, that, that's basically it. So, so that would tell me... Okay, let's think. So this is my interval. So I factored out the 999. Wait, so what, what do you mean by the interval? Because you, you, you just have... Oh, from number. a thousand factorial, right, from... Okay, so okay, okay. There's a thousand factorial, comma, a thousand factorial plus nine nine nine, right? Okay. Would that be my Um No, that's what I was thinking just... off the top of my head. Like that's an interval. Yeah, yeah, that that's good, that's good. You you um you just shift by a little bit, that's all that's the perfect okay. interval. Oh okay. Oh, because when none of them are prime is a Hmm. I think you are so close. <laughs> yeah. So can you like generalize this to like 999? It doesn't need to be 999. It could be 3. It could be 57. Yeah. And you can basically get the same argument, right? Because there are still... Because all of those factors are there. Yes. Okay, so could we... So that interval is very good already. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we don't know is a thousand factorial plus one. Because we can't use this argument to say that it is a factor of... It has a factor of... I don't know, like... If it is using this particular argument, that it will be a fact. Uh, has okay, one as a now. factor. So this is right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This number here, I have written in composite form. Yeah. I yeah, see. Okay, I've got idea. it now. It's <laughs> clicked. Right. Okay. So then I could just continuing this, just for argument's sake, to convince yep. myself. So then I'd say, well, that's a thousand times nine hundred ninety-nine times nine hundred ninety-seven factorial plus one. one. Yeah. If I went to a thousand factorial plus nine nine eight, yeah, and I keep going yeah. all the way down. So then I'd get to a point where I wouldn't know it was necessarily true, right? So I don't want that. I actually want a thousand factorial plus a thousand. Yeah. Um. Be yeah, or plus anything. No. Because now I know that's composite. Okay, so this is composite. Yep. Because I can factor out the thousand. Then I also know with 999, it's composite all the way down to plus 2. And then I factor out the 2, it's composite. Yep. And that's 999 yeah, integers. Yeah, that, that, that's it, that's it. Right. Yeah. I see. 1000 is like, like the right. exact amount. Is the small. It's is not that... necessarily the smallest, though. No, I don't it's, know. You're true, it's not necessarily the smallest. It's the smallest using this method. Yeah. The... But it's not necessarily the smallest that would exist. Yeah, it's just okay, that we don't know... This would give me 999 yeah. integers. Yeah, it's okay, just that we don't know whether, like, 1000 factorial plus 1 would be composite. Yeah, 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 no, of course, method... yeah, because, yeah, factoring out 1 doesn't actually yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't actually help. help. So, yeah, 
So that is okay. the first part of this. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, okay, so the second part is can we find an interval of 999 consecutive integers such that there are exactly 10 primes? Okay, wow. <laughs> All right, okay, let's. let's so from zero back. primes to 10 primes. Okay. Don't so... think too hard on this. Yeah, yeah, okay, so. So I know there are 1,000 factorial. I'm just going to note down what we figured out so far. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that 1,000 factorial uh, up to 1,000 factorial plus 1,000. So I know this interval um, has zero primes. OK. Um, now, how do I guarantee? prime numbers. Um, well, I could, I'm trying to thinking, can I use the sort of standard forms of primes? So like Masen primes, for example, could I send I mean, us something around, you know, because that at least guarantees one, but then I don't know if that's going to yeah, guarantee yeah, anymore, ten, is yeah. kind of what I'm thinking. But um, for their specific, because just because I can't pull out a factorial factor doesn't, as we were saying, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily yeah, yeah. prime. Because there could be another way of factorizing it. No, they can't. Wait, 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 wait. No, because there isn't possible for anything else to be a factor. Is that right? Well, um, I just want to say that what I mean by can you do this I don't need to need you to give any example. Okay, it's just it's just like, a yes or no. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, and the interval has to be specifically of size nine hundred ninety nine. Yes. Okay. So I want an interval. An interval size nine 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 with exactly ten primes. Okay, so can we do this? Is it as simple as sort of thinking about the distribution of primes? So the fact that we know they get rarer and rarer. I mean, and like approximate. Is it like approximately logarithmic or something? Yes, but don't. But you don't need to think like that specific distribution. Like you don't need to go to log n. Okay. Because, yeah, I think it's important to know that it's. Rarer, when yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes higher, but yeah. ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me think about this now. So I have found, right? I, th I think I get where you're going with this. <laughs> okay. So I have found an interval between two very large numbers. Yeah. Where I'm certain that there are zero primes. Yeah. So I can't go any bigger. Because they get rarer. Uh, I mean, you you can, it, it, but for arguments... Like I don't think you're going to get 10, right? I don't think it's... If okay. such an interval exists, I don't believe it will exist beyond this point. I am not too sure, but... but <laughs> I'm not too sure about Assuming that. Assuming they get rarer. It's not... Com yeah, but, I, I, I but would hypothesise. Yeah, okay, I yeah. can't prove it. I feel like that would be a reasonable... From my perspective, yeah, <laughs> I feel like open that, problem. <laughs> I feel like that would be a reasonable thing, because even if there was a, you know, a twin a pair of twin primes or something later on, which quite possibly there could be, because you know we don't know exactly how many of them yeah. there are and different things, but I think it, it would be very, very unlikely that there would be ten within a range of a thousand. Yeah. So, therefore, I'm going to turn my focus to: Can we get ten in an interval earlier? So, yeah. if we think about the first 10, let's start with that, just to give me something. So the first 10 primes, um, I'm sure I probably don't need to do this, but I find it easier to have concrete examples. Okay, so now yeah, I'm testing, good. can I write down prime numbers? <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, 7, yeah. 8, 9, uh, and then 29. Okay, so, the, so I've got 10 primes in... Um, an interval of 20, 28. Oh, 28 integers. Okay. So, 
if I were her to then get to a point where I could do 999 with exactly 10. Now if I had to guess, this is a complete guess, I think in the first 1000 integers, there's definitely, I'm going to say there's less than 200 primes. Yes, yep. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, don't know the, the exact, exact number. Yeah, the exact number is less than 200. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. I don't know the exact yeah, number okay. <laughs> off the top of my head. I'm just, it's going to be less than 200. Um, and then they're going to spread out more. So then in the next thousand, I would expect there to be a smaller number. And in the next thousand, a smaller number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting close. So yeah. is there a specific point? Okay, I want to say yes. Yes, but well, well, obviously, <laughs> you need, obviously, the the uh, the question is asking you why. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Um. So it's to do with this. So yeah. They, the answer is yes. By the way. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're becoming rarer. Okay, so they're becoming rarer. So there's yeah. going to be two hundred, and then in the next thousand, so say between a thousand and two thousand, there's like even fewer than that. And then eventually there will be fewer and fewer and fewer. And at some point it's going to... Because it's a... I think you could construct a sequence of numbers which has to decrease. And so therefore eventually you would get down to... The interval might not exactly... Using this method of me just going 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000. I don't think you would necessarily... You know, your interval wouldn't have to be a multiple of 1,000. Yeah, you don't need to. Yeah. No. But I think if it wasn't, you could try to shift yes. and make it work. Yeah. That's my argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I it's a decreasing that... sequence. We know they're getting rarer. So say there is initially 200 for argument's sake. Then the next lot, there's 180. Then the next lot, there's 150. Who knows how it's going to decrease? But you could use that to then get to a point where it's near to 10, approximately. And then you can kind of shift your interval appropriately. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I think, I think that, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That that's hand the main wavy yeah. construction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the main idea of the argument. So basically, uh, rather than saying that there are less than two hundred primes, mm -hmm. the argument is that there are just more than ten primes. That's enough. Okay, so there are yeah. more than ten. Yes, <laughs> and, then and then eventually, then, at some point, there will be fewer than ten. Yeah, and then the argument would be like, um, if you shift one, then you would only increase by one or decrease by one prime so you can always make it actually get to exactly 10 yeah um uh, the li like the nitty-gritty de detail would be like um i think the 999 is crucial here in that it is odd when when you have you, when you shift one mm -hmm. then you would cover uh, an even number which is obviously not prime yes and then it depends on whether the one that you have subtracted is prime or was not. prime or wasn't. Yes. So that would be either plus one. So it or allows you to actually. Prime. Yeah. 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 So you can be sure that you are going to decrease. Yeah. Or so stay the, the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not. It can increase. To be honest. Yeah. Um. It's not likely. Uh, <sighs> so it's kind of the discrete version of the intermediate yeah, yeah, yeah. value theorem. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So that's the second question. Um, I actually didn't get it to the end for for my interview, so you are already doing better than me. <laughs> because, good to know, good to know. Um, I think it also has something to do with the miscommunication between me and the interviewer, because I was thinking I have to give an exact example, mm. but, well, I, I don't think it's meant to be like that, so... Yeah, I mean, based on my own experience of having done interviews, if I was asking a question of this nature, like, I'm just looking for the candidate to say sensible things, okay. right? Which I feel like you were, right? It was yeah. just, you know, you were encouraging me by saying like, oh, you know, yeah, the, the, the decreasing bit and we don't need an exact interval and like it doesn't matter if you don't know exactly how many primes are less than a thousand. That's not the kind of thing that I as an interviewer would be trying to pick up on. Yeah, yeah. It's more like is this person saying sensible things right. and trying to think logically about the problem. Right, yeah. Okay. So now comes the third question. There's more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, 
So it's a bit complicated, which is why I have the, the prompt here. <laughs> uh, so it's a physics question. Um, okay. So in a maths it, interview or? Yeah, it actually okay. is a, right. in a maths interview. So, well, you, you know, Cambridge has a yes. department doubt. So, uh, yeah. I was in doubt. So, yes, I'm very yeah, aware. So, yeah. so you, you know that like theoretical physics could be part of your interview. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah, if you are inter interviewing, like uh, probably waiting for an interview offer. Just, just so you know, you, you can be interviewed on some physics question. So, okay, so I am going to read this to you because okay. the uh, yeah the I I I remember that my interviewer just also do that. Yeah. So, so am I allowed to make notes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, okay. sure, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Suppose you have a gun firing paint bombs. Okay. Yeah. At five meters per second. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and you are sitting in a centrifuge, like wow. Okay, <laughs> this is already getting so complicated. <laughs> okay, so there's so, there's you know, a gun like firing park rides. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. Think firing these, and I'm like in some rotatey, yeah, centrifuge thing, sort of like against the edge of it, or yeah, you you are at the edge of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are twenty two seats there. Okay. A uh, twenty two is a little bit important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the centrifuge um, has radius five meters. Uh, yeah, so R is five meters, yeah. And it is rotating at one radian per second. Yeah. So you aim the gun at uh, directly opposite you. Yeah. I knew where you were going with this. Yeah, so who do I who, hit? Yeah, who yeah, do yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll be able to work this out. Um, right. Now. Now, this is where my physics knowledge might be lacking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know it's going to turn according to the direction of your rotation. There's going yep. to be a force, so it will not go straight. It will, it will be as though it appears. But obviously, the bullet travels straight, but the thing's rotating. Yes. So from the, you know, you can imagine it as though the bullet is curving. If I were to draw a straight line, you know, if the bullet was carrying a marker pen, it would be as though you, know, you were drawing a curve. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm very aware it's going to, let's, so let's suppose I'm going anti-clockwise. So the bullet is going to curve to the right, let's say, if yes. I'm going anti-clockwise. Yeah. Now, exactly how much it's going to do that, I imagine is going to vary on, depend on a formula, which I probably don't know because I never did A-level physics. <laughs> I did GCSE oh. physics. Um, okay. okay. So I, I, I'm very happy with the setup of the problem. I do wonder whether I have the knowledge. Um, we'll you see. don't. You don't even need like F equals ma. Mm. So. Okay. So let's think about this. So it's going to be five meters per second. Ah. Okay. 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 No. I oh, and by I the way, it, um, twenty-two seats might point you to notice that we are taking pi. To be twenty two over seven. Okay, I was okay. <laughs> okay, cool, right. yeah. Okay, thank you. So pi is twenty two. <laughs> I don't like writing down pi equals twenty two <laughs> over seven, but I've written it. So pi is twenty two over seven. Fine, and I know that the total thing is two pi, uh, times the radius. So the. Why is that going to be important? Mm. Okay, the total angle is two pi radians. So that means if there are 20, so that's 22 over 7 radians, and there are 22 seats, so each seat takes up 1 seventh of a radian, right? If you were to sort of spread out from the middle, like this. No. That's not got 22 on, but I'm thinking each one of these is going to be uh, 1 seventh of a radian. Or is it 2? Oh yeah, yeah. It's Sorry, two two pi. Two radian. times that, so okay. it's two sevenths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so that's two sevenths of a radian, sort of expanding out for each seat. Yeah. Now, and the bullet is going at five meters per second, so it's going to travel a single radius, but then it's going to travel twice that because it's going to do one radius from me to the center, and then another. So it's as though, so to cross the circle, so the diameter is 10 meters. 
Okay, so it's going to take two seconds to travel 10 meters. But if you are traveling on this particular yeah, yeah, curve yeah. path, then it it's might not obviously be... a bit more. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I did think that. I did think that. But let's. I'm just going to go with this for a moment. So it's going to take two seconds. And in those two seconds, this thing will have moved two radians. Yeah. It's rotated by two radians in two seconds. By two radians. Each person's seat is two-sevenths of a radian. So that means I need seven. So seven seats across the person opposite. <laughs> Wait, um, so mm, not quite, because I don't think the, like, the bullet has traveled 10 meters, actually. It's actually slightly, like... Could I just guess it's six? <laughs> 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 Can I just throw out okay, six? Okay, so, so just think um, about it from the perspective of that bullet. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to have to go to a new page then. All right. I know I'm close. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for every... Okay, so key things. I know that the radius is five. I know that each seat covers, um, each seat covers two sevenths of a radian. Um, and we know it's rotating at one radian per second? Yep. Okay, one radian per second rotation. Okay. And... So while I'm here, I shoot the bullet. In the reference frame of the bullet, it appears to do this. Okay, so if the total distance across here is 10. Wait, so, so this is the reference frame of... Is it a drone or...? Not the drone, no, because the not the drone, because it's curving like this. Okay, okay. So I'm in the... the things attached, so I'm thinking of like... A camera from above that's also rotating. Okay. Then it would look like this. Um, so it's obviously, so this is directly opposite. So this is, if I'm at person one, would this be like person 11? I don't know. Let's just call it person 11. Directly opposite me. Um, so then, if you're saying it's not traveling 10 meters. So I'm guessing that's when my calculation has gone slightly wrong. So it's not going to be a full two seconds of travel time. No, no. I, I think we, we should uh, think about it from the perspective of the bullet. Like, what is the velocity at which the bullet is traveling? Five meters per second. Right? You told me it fires at five no, meters per second. No, actually not five meters per second, because you are also rotating. I thought you said I didn't need F equals MA. <laughs> No, that that's not fa F equals M A. Off the top of my head, I do not think I know how rotation is going to affect that velocity. Then, because you are also moving at this point, so ah, uh, okay. So I'm moving. So that five meters per second. So I'm moving this is... way, at one radian per second. Yeah, yeah. But the bullet's moving at five meters per second. So how does that relate to my rotation? Oh. Um. So that five meters is just um, from your perspective. It is moving at five meters per second. But mm -hmm. for the per but for the uh, for but for the drone that is. Just stationary here. Flying above it, yeah, okay, yep, yeah. And it's not five meters because it also, you know, also have to consider like the velocity of you. I don't know enough physics. <laughs> I'm standing by my excuse. I honestly don't think I know enough physics. Um, so one radian per second, what do you think about like the velocity? Well, I have an that, angular velocity. Yeah, you have an angular velocity. 
how do you change it to an actual velocity? Um, do I need to do like vectors? I mean, you. T I mean, am I doing like r dot is right? Is it like the r dot is r e r plus r theta dot e theta? Am I literally going into that level of detail? <laughs> You, you you don't need to, but if you if that is more comfortable, then that that's good. Okay. Okay, so let's go with that. So I'm saying my total velocity vector. I mean, the reason I didn't think to do this is, <laughs> I teach this in my dynamics course. <laughs> well, I haven't taught dynamics for a few years. I used to teach dynamics and teach this to my first years. So there's no way they would have done this at A level though, which is why I wasn't thinking to do okay, it. Okay. Okay. But it's fine. Let, so. Okay, so then it's let's just have an R dot. Okay, so it's R dot. So I've got five, five in R the ER, five in that direction, plus my angular velocity, which is, but but that's Whoa, a one. radian. Radian. Yes, is, because yeah, of yeah, theta. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was just checking out the right units. Plus yeah. one e theta. No, no, no. You have an R here in front. Theta dot. I see. Gotcha. <laughs> so theta dot is that. And then I know the radius, the radius is five, so it's plus five. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I've got, gotcha. So it's five radial velocity plus five in the e theta direction. So therefore, if I wanted to know my total velocity, uh, is it just as simple as squaring and adding them? Yeah, they, er and e Route theta 50. are, are so, perpendicular. So V is root 50. Am I going to approximate yes. that as 7? Uh, no? Root okay. 50 is fine, yeah. Okay. Okay, but so now I'm going at root know... 50 meters per second, so in brackets, approximately 7. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So if that's the velocity... But is this... So I'm going at a 45 degree angle. Yes, yes, that that's the thing. Because it's equal radial. Okay, so yeah. is that is that the idea then to think about from the stationary from there? I'm actually going strong. at a 45 yeah. degree angle. Yeah, yeah, and that's what this one's going to feel. So if this would be the eleventh person of 22, um, well, if I actually let's think about it this way. So if I'm at person one. Yeah. Then I'm going 45 degrees, so that is going to be pi over 2 radians. Yeah. Which is 22 over 7 for pi. So that's 11 <laughs> over 7 radians. And I know each person is 2 radians. So the next person here is at 2 sevenths, 4 sevenths for person 3. I'm just going to write this out to make sure I get it right. Person 4 is at 6 sevenths, 8 sevenths for person 5. Person 6... So it's person seven. So six people from me. But you also have to consider you are rotating. So what, what you have told me is that like at the 45 angle, what, what it's doing is for a camera, like a drone, mm -hmm. stationary drone, then it is traveling at a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. But okay. you are also rotating. So it's slightly less than six or seven here because but they, I they have I... to catch up so in in one rate like in one second or two seconds or something like that oh because up. there's also that yes so i would shoot so if i'm person one that'd be two three four five six so i'm shooting person seven okay so i'm initially shooting person seven but the whole thing rotates. Yes. In order to reach, pardon me, person seven, I've gone seven meters per sec. Well, I'm going with seven. Seven is root 50. If pi is 22 over seven, <laughs> root 50 is seven. <laughs> okay. So I'm shooting person seven at seven meters a second. Yeah. But, 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 but there's a rotation of one radian per second on top of that. Yeah, so you have to think about like, what so how is how many the... seconds yeah, have passed? You, yeah, well, how many seconds have passed? Wait, hang on. I've lost.
lost myself. The organ's putting me off. <laughs> um, I need a new diagram. This is way too much physics for me. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a person. And I think this is person seven. And I am person one. Because person seven is at... No, they were at 12 over 7 rad. I'm actually going 11 over 7 rad. Hmm. Hmm. So even this doesn't work nicely. Okay, anyway. Um, and I know the magnitude. So I know my velocity V is equal to 7 meters per second. Approximating that. But how... And then this is rotating at one. I'm not sure. How do yeah, I know how long it's traveling, though? But you, you know you are you are exactly like... This is a quarter of a circle, right? Yeah. And it's exactly hitting like 45 degree. So this is five meters. This is five meters. So this is yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. square root of 50. Yeah. So the and I'm traveling at that distance, so it's taking exactly a second. Yeah, this okay, is, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was too many, th okay, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So, so it's, it's taking one, so the time is one second. Okay, so the time taken is one second, so therefore um, we've moved one extra radian, so 19 over 7. Wait, no, I'm moving that way, though. Yeah, so... So it's actually going to be minus 7, 5 over 7 radians from me. Wait, why is it So it's going to be person 3? Why is it 5 over 7 here? So... So I'd worked out we were going... Okay, let's start again. Maybe it's 4 over 7. So I worked out that we were going 11... Right, that was 45 degrees, yes. which is 11 over yep. 7 radians. But then it's also rotating that way in a second. So it should be like minus 1 radian. Yes, so minus, so, so 4 over 7. Four, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, sorry, I was subtracting uh, from 12. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was subtracting from 12. So it's 4 over 7 radians, which is going to be person 3. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 4 over 7. <laughs> yeah. yeah radians which is person three because i'm at zero the next one was at two yeah. over seven radians and then the so other it's two people be... to my right yeah yeah that's Not the it. person next to me the person there if i were to shoot it would immediately because of the okay yeah because like the the most um the most difficult part is to figure out that um the part about relative velocity yeah so, yeah, yeah 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 because what you're doing five meters per second is just from your perspective it is five meters per second but then you are also rotating so that's so. person three yes i'm that's just thinking my initial guess my initial <laughs> guess without doing the relative velocity stuff right so i said directly opposite would directly opposite me be person okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna work this out now <laughs> would be would be person 11 i think no would be person 12 if i'm person one I think it's between... Between 11 and 12. It could, yeah. Okay. So directly opposite me would be... If the total... So I've got 44 over 7 radians. So directly opposite me would be 22 over 7 radians. So that would be exactly where person 11 is? No. Person 12 is. Yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. Person... Okay, so my original... Okay, my original guess was i've got this now was that i was gonna fire i'm just intrigued as to how far off i was without doing the relative velocity thing so i was saying that to that and then i was like but it's gonna move so i was guessing person five because i said minus seven people to this side ah right right so i was guessing i was guessing either person five or four depending on how you count those seven people oh, right. so i wasn't far off <laughs> right like, like my very initial but okay so that that was the key thing i was missing initially yeah is it wasn't as simple as as traveling the 10 meters because you have to... So how would you do it without doing the R dot stuff? I, um, it's just 
kind of remembering the formula where you have. I to told you I didn't know the formula. That's <laughs> okay. So would like a typical student in an interview be expected to remember the formula, as you say, or like know how to do this? Because I, for example, I don't think I've ever like I know the R dot stuff, the vector stuff, the dynamic stuff, but I definitely wouldn't have had a clue, like how to do that otherwise. Okay, like, so as a high school student, no chance, like because I just okay. didn't do physics. Right. So, um, so essentially, you uh, Cambridge has like an SAQ, but mm -hmm. so I think it's called the supplementary. I I don't know what A stands for. Questionnaire. Okay. So, uh, so basically, probably admissions. Yeah, probably, probably <laughs> admissions. Yes. So, um, in the SAQ, you would declare what kind of topics you have covered in okay. your maths or physics or chemistry or whatever. Um, so they would only ask the question that would cover that, that you have been covered, like you have covered I before see. in class. So, yeah. So, so like you would have been like, I have covered physicsy, whatever rotational stuff. Right. You would have, and I'd be like, I've not done that. So please don't <laughs> ask me this question. <laughs> yeah, like that. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that also makes sense because Cambridge also repeatedly says, in their a lot of like admissions talks or something like that they wouldn't be asking trick questions they are yep. only asking things that um you have the knowledge and tools to deal with so mm -hmm. okay yeah because uh, that as we saw that was the thing that got me right once you know i just immediately because i was thinking in the mindset of what did i know at a level at school right and nothing about the R dot vector thing like that I learned that at university so I was like it's not going to be that and then obviously as we saw that eventually was how I figured out what was happening yeah I but think, my initial yeah. thought was no way would you be able to do that um, yeah um so yeah I just what I think is like you you just need to re remember the like the R theta dot stuff but um yeah but but if you haven't come across that yet you probably wouldn't be able to do it so yeah um it's so, a cool problem though yeah, it's yeah, definitely yeah. like, it's one of those very like counterintuitive, you know, you're thinking surely it's, you know, you're shooting over there. It's not going to be the person almost next, like, you know. Yeah, almost next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of the, the joy of it, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, probably the hardest question on the interview. So definitely the hardest for Thomas. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well it was the most physics-y, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so. I thought the prime number one was also quite tough, though. There's a lot of... I would say high level concepts being tested there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I sort of, um, the first one felt very standard for sure. Yeah, ju ju yeah like not easy, yeah. definitely not easy, but it felt quite standard. But yeah, the, the prime number one um, felt like a tougher, to me at least, felt like a tougher high level one that I might ask. Um, and yeah, and then this one, again, to, for, for me, yeah, yeah, felt yeah. like more of a physics y question. I really enjoyed it and it was a really interesting problem. Right. But, but sort of, I guess it makes sense if you were talking coming from a physicsy background and you said you're now actually doing physicsy stuff, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. clearly influenced you in terms of what you were doing. Um, awesome, but no, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Tom. Here. Um, so go get, go check out your, his channel. Yeah. Um, Tom rocks maths. Yeah. So um, just a little bit of remark. Um, I think when I compare the this set of interview questions with a lot of my other friends. This is probably the hardest one. So don't worry if you haven't uh, like finished or completed or like don't know how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, probably it's going to be slightly easier. Uh, so don't worry too much if you are um, waiting for an interview offer or you are considering applying to Cambridge and that maybe scares you off. <laughs> so um, don't worry too much. Um, so. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.